beauty of email is it's a blank canvas. You can you can write them how you want. Like there's no set structure, there's no rules or anything like that. This guy will never get anywhere because he doesn't understand there's more to life than bodybuilding. Content creation is not a chore. You can do it like that. Not recognizing that actually there's a market out there for everything. <laughs> To make the perfect Instagram post. He's getting really good at these hooks, isn't he? They're snappy and bitey. I like it. Very, very good. Like it. Um, hello, welcome. We are Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, and we are here to help you with your fitness business in any way we possibly can with our amazing advice that we give you for free here on YouTube. The YouTube. Yeah, that's what the old people call it. The free, YouTube. mate. Free, mate. It's all free, mate. Um, so today we're going to talk about why you should slip into people's DMs and just call them mate all the time, mate. Um, no, we're not talking about that. That would be stupid. Don't forget about the scholarships as well. Hola, mate. Scholarship, mate. You want a scholarship, mate? I'm yeah. good. It's worth 100,000. Make it up. Why don't you? It's Harvard, is it? Harvard scholarship. That's 150. I heard. Harvard, eh? 200. Wow. What are we talking about? Scholarships. How to make a perfect, perfect post. Perfect post. So in this video, yeah, we're going to talk about the perfect post. So something we touched on in the members group at, in, at great length, which we're not going to on the YouTube video. We're going to give you a little bit of a teaser. Um, so a lot of people find it hard to maybe come up with a niche and all that sort of stuff. But let's say you've, you've nailed your niche. You think, right, this is the niche I want to work with. I'd love to work with this type of person. How am I going to get that stuff across and make sure that these people um, get the advice they need from me? Um, but you don't know maybe how to put your personality into it. You don't know how to make it fun, engaging, different than what everyone else is doing. You know, like shouting and deficit at them. Um, yeah, that's really helpful. So we're going to talk about Mike's little framework he put together. It's genius. Um, I, w I wouldn't say genius. I'd say, um, yeah, look at, look at that face. Nothing genius came out of that mouth, did it? Um, but it's, it's a way that you can kind of like put your personality into posts and how you can think about how you're going to deliver the content. Because a lot of people, what they do, I think, with content is they just come up with an idea and they go, right, I'm going to talk about why you shouldn't go on a low-carb diet. And they literally just say that on, on a reel or, or, or put it on, on, a, on, a, on a camera image and it's like, great. So we're going to talk about our process and how we've done this before previously, where we go, right, here's an idea. And then here's, say, four different ways that we can present that idea. And it's four different formats that we can use of posts. And all of a sudden, you've got eight different posts over the next, what's going to be, what, the, over the next four weeks, so you can spread it out. So really, you only have to come up with one topic idea for your niche and all the different ways that you can present that um, and, and deliver it means that you can actually create very, very different content without doing much more work. So I posted a little carousel on this. Um, and wasn't it really good, mate? It was done on Canva, wasn't it, that one? I remember. Weren't done on Canva, no. I remember it was, uh, it was well, you must have spent hours on it, I'm yeah. sure. For, for good content like that, yeah, you've got to put hours in, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Show sure. it. Look, I don't know if they'll be able to see it, to be fair. This is Mike's uh, art. There we go. There's the, there's the first one. That's it, look. It's the first arrow. Arrows arrows. Can you see the first arrow on that I think one? Gordon will be able to put and that, then that up on the, the screen. The second one. Look at all the fonts he's using. That is good. Big number on it. Well, mate, I like the big number. Big number. Yeah. Number two. Number two. That there you go, comes yeah. after one. Yeah, and that got 133 likes, mate. I bet I got loads of saves as well, probably from people. Because, Did it? Yeah. This is the legit, the most helpful piece of content I've ever read. Did you pay to say that? Not my words. So, um, he's even gone for the center aligned rather than the left aligned as well, which is which is a, a massive error. Well, yeah, it yeah. was because it was literally um, three or four slides, I think, that I put up on my story. You did. And then I was like, do you know what? The world needs to hear this. And the world <laughs> the being world. the 133 people that liked it. Um, so you, you hear people bang on about you need to you know your niche and blah, blah, blah. Great. How does that translate into what you're posting. So I came up with a little bit of a framework where you can take one niche point that you have, one niche point, and I'll, I'll go into it in specifics in a second. Then underneath that, you write your opinion on that niche point. Underneath that, you talk about the personal brand that you're going to use within the content. So the trait that you are going to display, which I'll expand in a second. Underneath that, you will then um, talk about the delivery method so the type of post that it's going to be. And underneath that, you'll put either the hook or the theme of the, the post. Um, so I'm going to break that down. That is, it's good, mate. But the problem is, mate, now you put it out into the world, is it will probably get stolen, mate. Will it? I reckon, mate. Yeah. That's the problem, mate. But giving out this good advice, it's just going to get, someone's going to nick it out and take it as their own. Oh, well, whatever. It comes yeah. out of our brain first. So whatever. <laughs> people, people won't do it. Um, should I have said that? Done it now. I've done it now. So let's just point. take pick a niche point. Let's just take the, the niche point is um my niche takes supplements and expects to get in shape without changing anything. That's the niche point. 
So I'm going to show you three different ways, three different mediums to get that same point across. The opinion being that's useless. Taking supplements and expecting change is useless. So niche point, take subs, expect change. Opinion, useless. Personal brand. So for this first post, I'm going to use bluntness. So I'm going to be blunt. Okay. So just on that as well, just, just to expand upon that. So when Mike says the personal brand point, there's obviously elements to your personal brand that are the top of like your, we, we have a brand pie, we have a, an exercise we do with all our clients. But essentially, there's going to be say three to five traits that you display regularly within your content. So one of Mike's is bluntness, I don't know if you noticed. So there'll be bluntness, there'll be humor, there'll be passion, there'd be maybe empathy, and then maybe another one, right? But you would have those different things within your, that's what Mike means when he says the personal brand. It's the, it's the element of your personal brand that you're going to use to, to kind of correct bring life to the content. Yeah, so person, basically personality trait. So like Dan said there, humor, sarcasm, fucking bluntness, in, you know, informative, whatever, whatever it is. So it's not just like, because Mike does that, you have to be blunt. It's like, what are your yeah. traits? So like a lot of times people try to be funny. Well, you're not funny. Don't try to be funny. Be something else. Yeah. Be sensitive, it, be caring. Sensitive, whatever you need to be. Emotive, yeah, caring, yeah. yeah. Um, empathetic, could be anything. So for, for this specific post, I'm going to talk about bluntness. The delivery method, i.e. the post type, that can be um, real, um, tweet caption post, um, carousel, um, personal post. Personal post. Yeah. So for this one, I'm going to do tweet caption post. And then the post or theme will be, if fat burners work, why are you still fat? So that's one post. So you take the same niche point and opinion, niche point, fat burners, um, or supplements and, and expecting results, opinion, useless, personal brand that I'm going to go for this time, humor. Less, less bluntness, more humor. I'm going to deliver it as a reel. Me, sat on the sofa, eating crisps. Visual, visual um, representation of doing no exercise, no movement, eating crisps, eating shit. Take a tablet, lift up my shirt, sh check for abs, still fat. Eat more crisps, take another pill, lift shirt up again, still fat. Eat more crisps, take another pill, lift shirt up, more fat. Representation of doing nothing, eating shit, taking a tablet, and keep repeating that to no avail. That funny to some people, real. Third one, niche point. Takes fat burners or takes supplements, um, expects them to work, doesn't work. You opinion, useless. Personal brand, informative. Um, delivery method, carousel. Post. Three supplements you're definitely wasting money on. One, fat burners. Two, BCAAs. Three, diet way. Three different posts that have been made out of one niche point. You get 10 niche points. You make three different posts out of each one. That's 30 different pieces of content. You then go back to that first one the next time you do it and go niche point, take supplements, blah, blah, blah. opinion, um, caption post, bluntness. So instead of saying, if fat burners um, work, why are you still fat? Instead, this time I'm going to go, Guess what? The next brand of fat burners is just as useless as the last. Gets the same message over, same bluntness, same caption, but I've changed the wording. Different. And that is all you're doing. Your content will never change. The science isn't going to change. So you're going to have the same 10 things to talk about forever. If you look at what we've ever done, we'll say the same thing in our content. You don't need a VA. You don't need to charge up front. People send cold DMs fucking believe, you know, be the best coach you can be, all of that. It's, it's the same thing. Nothing's going to change, but it's just the way that we package it is differently. So we just did a, a, a what, what we would class as a funny reel of me dressed up as a Mexican doing, hola, mate, hola, mate. In every opportunity that, 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 that Dan was in, in his office, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, in the bathroom, I was there, hola, mate. The point of the post was to represent the mentors that you can't get away from even when there's no response back because Dan wasn't responding that I was there at every opportunity responding to everything we use the word hola mate because it was literally kind of using a reference point of one specific mentor but it was it was still a representation of what mentors do um for example, my missus didn't know who it was specifically about, but she still found it funny because she kind of got the gist of it. So we could have done that, but in a caption or in a carousel or a personal post, we could have said the same things, but the way that we represented it was our personal branding and how we got our creativity to, to, to convey the message that we wanted to. It wasn't just um, it wasn't just a post taking the mick. 
there's a reason behind it. Does that make sense? hundred percent. And the other thing as well, I want to expand on that is also like when it comes to email writing, I get from coaches all the time, or how do I write emails? And emails are exactly the same as what Mike's described in terms of Instagram, in that you can create loads of different ways of getting the same point across. The beauty of email is it's a blank canvas. You can, you can write them how you want. Like there's no set structure. There's no rules or anything like that. And I did the same in my emails. I used to pick a point. I used to go, right, today I'm going to be blunt or I'm going to be empathetic or I'm going to be f- funny, sarcastic, whatever it is. It's exactly the same. Once you find this groove, content creation is not a chore. You can do it like that. You can just go with the flow. Like we come to these videos, right? We don't plan anything other than the title. We have a rough idea maybe what we want to talk about, but we know enough about what we, about our industry and about coaches and what their problems are and our niche that we know how to deliver it. So we know with these YouTube videos, right? They're going to be mainly informative. You're not really going to sit here and do like a low, you know, a 20 minute funny one. It just wouldn't really, wouldn't really work. Whereas some of the other daily vlogs we do, maybe they're going to be more funny. They're going to be more in, in, entertaining from, from, from that point of view, hopefully anyway. You, none of you are liking it, so I'm hoping, hoping, yeah. hoping they are. Um, but you see how you can apply it to every other bit of content you do. So even on Instagram stories, you'll see us on stories. Some days we're ranty. Some days we are, we try and be funny. Some days we take the mix. Some days it's just purely social proof, right? There's just loads of different ways of doing it. And I think coaches, they want the one way of doing it. There isn't one way of doing it. If you try and copy us one day, you'll just be blunt. And if you try and copy us another day, you'll just be funny. It's like, well, which way is it then? Well, all of them. They all need to be there. And this is why it comes back to this personal brand, because you need to identify the traits within you that are unique to you, not to me or to Mike, because me and Mike are different within our brand. We have a brand. We have a, a personal brand for, for Biceps and Banner, Business and Banner. We each have our own individual ones as well within that, that we lean towards and we, we kind of lean on, which is why we, um, we probably, I suppose, attract different types of people to, to, to us. That's the whole point of coaching. And coaches can't get their head around the fact that, that, it's going to take time. You're not going to magically come into coaching with us and go, oh, I've nailed it. Two weeks in, I know my niche. I know exactly how to create all the content in the world. No, it takes time. It took us five years to kind of figure this out and get to this place. We were doing that, that Mike's just described, for for years without realizing it. It's only really when we kind of deconstruct it now and look back, we go, well, that's what we did. That's all we ever did. That's all we ever, you know, expect our coaches to do as well is there's only so many topics you can talk about. You're not going to like I say, you're not going to magic new topics out of thin air, what people need. So it's about finding different ways of doing that and making sure you don't just follow the same path, which is why it comes back to the whole, did a video on this, the, maybe last week, depending on what order I put these out, um, about copying us doing the podcast like this. It's like, you, you can only get across so much doing it like this. You're limited because of the format, which is why those formats that Mike just described are so important. Is it's not just the niche point. That is literally 20% of it. As Mike just said, there's five parts of it. And the niche bit is 20%. So just knowing your niche is great, but it's 20% of the problem. The other parts of the problem are knowing your personal brand, which is what we do with the personal brand pie. If you get in a member's group, you can get hold of that training. It's worth, I mean, that's worth 100 quid alone, to be honest, just that. Um, so that's another 20% of it. Another 20% of it is understanding the different formats and getting better with understanding video, understanding tweet posts, understanding personal posts, captions, how to write better captions. Then you've got email. That's another side of it we've not even gone into there with that is it's, All this stuff is blended together to go, well, this is how you create your content and how you're going to be unique. Trust us, we we watch so many coaches, we watch all their content. There is so much boring content out there that's not unique in any way, shape or form. It's honestly, to stand out in this industry is not difficult. You just have to do what we've just described for a year and you will find you've created your personal brand and your own way of doing things and your own style of content, whereby soon you won't even watch other people's content because you don't need to, to, for inspiration or to copy. You'll just know what you want to say. So yeah, on, on, the, on that point, we've, we've done <clears throat> touching on email. So just to show you how easy it would be and to come at it from a different style, I could do an email about the fat burners or the supplements and the hook, the title could be, I overdosed on fat burners. Would people open that? Yep. That's your hook straight away. And then I would actually talk about my experience with fat burners. So I would tell them a story and I would say the year is fucking 2018. Um, I've bought the CLA. I've got the diet way. I've got the fat burners. I'm ready to go. The full stack. Did I do anything about my nutrition? Definitely not. 
You could even do like, you know, with the emails, well, coaches, again, they don't know how to write emails, right? You could even do a story. You could do a discussion between a husband and wife. And it could be the wife being like, why are you taking notes? You're still fat. And the husband going, oh shit, or well, whatever. Again, the punchline being the same thing. Like if, if, you're, if, if they work, why are you still fat? Same punchline, but it could just be told as, a, as a, literally a story. And you could use literal things that people have said to you or your missus might have said to your fellow, whatever. You can do that. So there's loads of different ways that you can do it. It's just about, you're only limited by what you can think of and what you can create rather than just, most people, the reason that their minds are limited in terms of their content creation is because they copy other people and that their content is just reproduced and copied from someone else. So when they copy that one piece, they're like, oh, run out of ideas now. Whereas if you do it like this, you don't run out of ideas because you go, well, I think that'd be funny. I don't care if other people would find it funny or not. I think it's funny. Like us interrupting each other going, hey mate, you're right. It's, we think it's funny. I don't care if you know the joke or not. I find it funny. It makes this more enjoyable for us. That's a good enough reason to put, leave it in and keep it in. That's what you need to kind of embrace within your content is what do you think's funny? What do you want to put out there in the world? Why don't you share a funny story of you and your missus, your missus being shit at cooking, whatever. People might not want to see it. I find it funny. So I put it out there. It's stuff like that, that people are so resistant to post, but that's what makes you unique and makes someone want to work with you. I know it's really hard to believe, but that is it. Um, I don't know whether this, this video is too long to talk about this, but there'd be an interesting conversation that I just had with Will from Sam and Will. Sam and Will, Will and Sam. Sam Will and Will. Sam. Will and Sam, surely. Will and Sam. And obviously um, they're doing their own version of, of, of what they believe good content to be. And I, I like the content. They've just come up with some funny reels. And the conversation sparks off of one guy that trains in the same gym. Um, He's a, he's a PT and he actively dislikes Will. And they've got a mutual friend. And this guy was talking about Will to the mutual friend saying, I can't understand how this, how this guy gets so many clients. All he does is dick around on Instagram and yet he's got more clients than me. This is a serious game and I don't understand why he's not taking it seriously. That, that's what he said. And I've just said to Will, I said, this guy will never get anywhere because he doesn't understand that there's more to life than bodybuilding. And he doesn't understand why you're getting success. So he's never going to be able to use that in how he does things because the center of his universe is professionalism, is high level stuff, is this tiny little pocket of what he believes to be the pinnacle of the industry, not recognizing that actually there's a market out there for everybody and leaning into that. And I've just said to Sam, uh, Sam and Will, because they've said that they've noticed a few people starting to copy them. I'm like, but you will always be a step ahead because it's coming out of your brain. They're waiting for you to do what you're doing for them to then copy it. If it comes out of your brain, it can't be copied. And that's the same with us. If we're coming up with it, you'll always be a step behind. Copy us, no doubt you will. No doubt people start to talk about how good group coaching is because the CEO's getting success with it. Of course they will. No doubt you're seeing it now that people are saying, oh, you shouldn't call DM because we're saying it and we're getting success with it. You'll no doubt get people saying you shouldn't get VAs at some stage because they're seeing us. If you look at what we've done, we've never followed any trend bar the things that we genuinely believe in. And because of that, our message has never deviated. And that's why you know that we have clarity in what we're doing. Everybody else changes every second Tuesday. Alex or Moses say something, they change their marketing strategy. They see somebody else getting success with something, they change the marketing strategy. They um, want to spin a little bit of a money spinner, so they change the narrative to fit that. All we do is the same thing, because it's coming out of there. It's stuff that we're seeing, we're doing, we're understanding, we're using social media, and it's the stuff we've always done. And that's when you're going to get success. When you forget about what everybody else is doing, and you focus on what you're doing, and if you do what I've just said about the, the niche points, the opinion, if you do that for 30 days and then you look back in 30 days time, look back at your content and go, over the last 30 days, have I been able to put over my opinions, my personal brand and my niche? If you use that method I've just said, you will look at that content and go, that's it. That's me on a page. That's who I want to talk to on a page. If you do it correctly, if you look at it now before doing that, look at your last 30 days content. Have you been consistent? Is it clear who you work with? Is it clear about your personality traits? Does it demonstrate everything that is involved within your coaching? The answer is more than likely no. Do that over the next 30 days and then look back and I bet you the answer is yes. And the other thing as well with that, that coaches really struggle with their head around is that this is a long-term game. We've always preached a long-term game. I think you're going to see that change as well. Mentors are going to start saying that. A lot of them previously always focus on short term, go from here to here in 90 days, blah, blah, blah. We always talk about the long game. And I believe if you do that exercise that Mike just described and you go, right, compared to where I was at the start, oh my God, it's like, 
you know, I'm, I'm pretty much there. Like, I feel like I've doubled how good I am. Well, guess what? The next month you'll be able to double it again. So let's say you feel that you've just done one month. And you're like, oh, it's probably like 50% of me on a page, 50% of my niche. Cool. Next month it's 60%. Next month after that is 70%. Next month is 80%. And before you know it, every single month you're pumping out 95% bang on niche related content. You will not struggle for clients. The problem is that people do the naught to 50 and go, oh, I've, I've cracked it. I've, oh, sweet. And then they take their foot off the gas. They go drop down to 25% then. And then you just take their foot off the gas. They get a few clients and go, oh, I don't need to worry about it anymore. You need to be on this all the freaking time. And by a, in a year's time, you'll be able to look at your page and go, pretty much every single post I put out is bang on. That's the point you're trying to get to. Not within a month getting there, not within three months. If you can be that 10% better every single month, you will be unstoppable in 12 to 18 months time. Coaches don't want to hear that. They want it in 12 to 18 days and they want the template and they want the DM script and they want the, how do I do a call to action? In 12 to 18 months, you won't need to do call to actions that are perfect. Like we don't, we just describe that. We don't need to do that because we know our niche to a team. We put out content every single day that we can hand on heart, look back on and go, that is exactly what I believe, exactly what I want to say and done exactly the delivery method I wanted it to be because it's taken us time to get there. So that is how to make the perfect post. Um, Believe it or not, the perfect post isn't um, having a microphone on the end of a wooden spoon. Um, it's not about waving a pound of fat. It's not making about. It's not making a joke about shagging somebody's mum while you're doing an RDL. Those things are not the perfect post. The perfect post doesn't get you the most engagement, doesn't get you the most likes, doesn't get you the most um, views. The perfect posts are things that conform to the structure that we've just said, done over a period of time. So that over six months, 12 months, you have a brand message you have who you're working with and why they should work with you from a professional and a personal sense. That will be what you're known for. If you are known for something, that's what's going to get you clients. Just like Sam and Will, my clients, they're known for those local lads that dick around, that make fitness fun again. That's what they're known for. They get the results to back it up. Just like us, we're known, those guys who have a dig at the industry, bit of sarcasm, we love the office, bit of humor, we have the results to back it up but we're known for those other bits as well. We're the controversial guys. Like, that's what we're known for. You need to be known for something. You cannot be the same as everybody else because nobody will know you. That's how to make the perfect post. Go and make them. And if you want to find out what other mistakes you're making within your online fitness business, we've got a video that covers 29 mistakes that online coaches make in their business. All you have to do is DM one of us the word BB29, as in 29, not the word 29. BB29. Yeah. No space. All one word. No space. DM us that. You'll get a free video that goes over those 29 mistakes that we delivered for our members group. So those guys have paid for it. You're getting it for free. Anyone in the members group already, you've already had it. You've already seen it. Make sure you apply it. Um, but yeah, if you want that, just DM one of us, uh, BB29 on Instagram, and you will get that. Very, very quickly.